so as all of us know, I mean, uh, um, Brexit was voted on last year uh, by the British public. It, it won a majority, the idea of the United Kingdom leaving, leaving um, the European Union. Uh, the exact nature of what that leaving uh, meant w was unclear. And let, let's for a minute talk about what, the, what being a member of the European Union means for, for, uh, for the UK. What it means is free movement of capital, free movement of goods, and free movements of, of, of labor. So uh, you can work anywhere in the European Union. You can export import anything from one place in the European Union to another place in the European Union. And you can transfer finances and, and money and capital across borders without restriction among the European Union. Unfortunately, as part of that deal comes also a deal that has to do with regulation. So the idea was that if we're going to move products from country to country, well, what about the fact that some countries have different regulations than other countries? about the quality of the products, about the components of the products, about the way labor is treated in any particular country. So unfortunately, in addition to all this standardization around uh, free movement of capital, labor, and, and goods, which I am 100% for, I, I think, I think uh, the European Union, from the perspective of freedom of movement of capital, labor, and goods is a fantastic institution. Unfortunately, in order to so-called synchronize all these countries, what the European Union has done is it imposes a centrally established, in Brussels, in the capital of the European Union, standards of regulation over all of the countries that are members in the European Union. And of course, that wouldn't be bad if the European Union was dominated by pro-free market capitalist political parties that believed in uh, no or minimal regulations and uh, a pretty loose standards that leave it up to the markets and consumers to determine what goods to buy or sell and free labor markets where internal labor markets are not regulated. So if they imposed free markets on the, enti on the entirety of Europe, if they imposed low regulation on the entirety of Europe, I wouldn't be complaining. But of course, that's not the case. The European Union is dominated by a, a bureaucratic, statist, central planning mindset that wants to control and dominate all the aspects of the local economies that are now part of this European Union. So in addition to the good stuff, free movement of capital, labor, and goods, what you also have, what you also have is the imposition of, uh, of regulations, of controls, of a legal system, of, of, a, of, of, uh, of, a, of a, a court system within Europe, uh, European courts, that is anti-freedom, that is anti-markets, that is anti-capitalist. So the Europe, the, the, now, the Brits, uh, or, or the, 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 I guess the Brits, decided last year that they wanted out of this arrangement. Now, the real question is, what was it about this arrangement that caused them to want out? Was it the free movement of labor? There's a lot of complaints in England about uh, Eastern Europeans coming into uh, the UK and taking a lot of jobs and uh, providing uh, low-cost labor, if you will, and just being Eastern Europeans and not being Brits. Uh, of course, there's a whole wrapped up in this is the whole Muslim migration issue, which, uh, you know, if the, if the Muslim migrants get into Germany and achieve legal residency in Germany, which is very lax about these things, then they can easily go into the UK because, again, there's a free movement of labor. So anybody who is a legal citizen, legal resident even of Germany can also go into, um, can easily go into the UK. Uh, so there was an objection to immigration, so that was one. Was it opposition to free trade that motivated the Brexiters? What is it the idea of sovereignty, control over their own country? But sovereignty for the purpose of what? For the purpose of establishing freedom or for the purpose of establishing walls? What was the purpose of sovereignty? What was the goal of sovereignty? Was the purpose, as, as many of my free market friends who voted for Brexit uh, uh, said, that the, the real purpose was uh, to get uh, 
So the question was, why was was Brexit happening? What, what was the purpose of those who voted for it? And at the time I said, uh, I'm for Brexit if the purpose of Brexit is to bring about greater freedom. If the purpose of Brexit is the, you allow the United Kingdom, for example, to get rid of all the burdens and regulations imposed on it, by the European Union. If the purpose of Brexit is to allow the UK to establish free trade with other countries around the world, like the UK, like China, like other parts of Asia, like Africa, like whoever, right? Because right now, if being a part of the EU, only the EU can set trade policy outside of the EU. So sovereignty would allow the UK, leaving Brexit would allow the UK to actually set its own its own trade policies. It would allow the UK to now have free trade with the rest of the world. And would a deal for Brexit include free trade with Europe itself? Because I think that's a huge benefit for the UK. I would actually have liked to have seen, my ideal Brexit deal would have been free trade with Europe, free movement of capital with Europe, free labor movement with Europe. Now, the Europeans might not have agreed to this, but that's what I would ideally done. And if the Europeans had not agreed with it, what I would have done if I were running England and if I had, I guess, a dictatorial power, because I don't think the British would, British would go with this, is I would unilaterally have left the European Union. I would have lowered tariffs to zero. I would have allowed immigrants to come in from people who, ha who, could, who had a job, uh, so a free movement of labor and free movement of capital. So I would have allowed from my end everything and told the European unions, hey, I'd like you to lower your tariffs with us to zero as well. I'd like you to allow Brits to come over to Europe. I'd like you to allow our capital to flow to you. But whatever the case, we are going to allow those freedoms. Then I would have gone out to the rest of the world and established uh, free trade agreements with as many countries as possible. I also would have abandoned all the EU regulations and started lowering regulations within the UK and slowly eliminating them. Now, that obviously uh, would have been me, right? I don't think that's what the British people actually want, unfortunately. And in that sense, I'm not sure Brexit <laughs> is a good thing because I'm not sure what the British people want. Now, what did Theresa May get? Not much. No autonomy to establish free trade deals with other countries. The, the England will stay a part of what's called the custom union. So you will have free movement of goods and probably free movement of capital. But also means that the UK cannot cut free trade deals with anybody else. It only gets that free trade with uh, Europe. But as part of this customs union, the, 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 the UK will have to enforce all the European Union's regulatory regime. So all the parts of the European Union's regulations that, I, that, that are what I find offensive, what I think are horrific, what I think was the whole purpose of getting rid of Brexit was to get rid of those regulations, Theresa May has adopted them all into the Brexit deal. Now, in addition to that, there's this massive complication about Northern Ireland. I don't know how much details you guys are interested in. But Northern Ireland, right? Northern Ireland is, is this place that, that still has, uh, you know, the U it's still part of the UK. Uh, many of the people in Northern Ireland would like to be part of Ireland. Um, but it's the whole Catholic Protestant thing. You know, Ireland is a Catholic country, or at least was nominally. It seems now that it's approved abortion. And it has divorce and it, you know, it seems to have moved away from I, even self-identified as Catholic. But in the North, there are Protestants and Catholics. And for the most part, the Protestants have not wanted to be part of Ireland. But Northern Ireland also doesn't want suddenly to be a border between Ireland and Northern Ireland where you have to check passports and where, you, where there's no free immigration in and out or free movement of people in and out, where there are now customs, where there's now tariffs, where there's now all these regulations that control movement. So there is a, a big issue on how to solve this island thing. On the one hand, they're part of the UK. On the other hand, I think the solution is, I mean, my view, the solution is give Northern Ireland to the Irish. I mean, Ireland now is maybe the uh, economically freest country in Europe, with exception maybe of Switzerland. 
Ireland is maybe second most free country in Europe. Maybe it's even f freer than Switzerland. I've talked about this before. Per capita GDP in Ireland on a, a purchasing power parity, that is if you control for cost of living, is actually higher than Switzerland. So the best place in the world, the best place in Europe to live today is Ireland. So whereas before, I think Northern Ireland didn't want to join Ireland because Ireland, you know, abortion was banned and divorce was banned and they, they were generally very Catholic and statist and controlling and fairly socialist. Now, abortion is legal, divorce is legal, the Catholicism has kind of been put to the side and they have the freest economy in Europe. So I maybe, how about this? Here's blasphemy, here's real blasphemy. I mean, if, if you guys, if anybody listening is lives in the UK, plug your ears, don't listen to this. Maybe Ireland should take over the whole of the UK because I think Ireland has better economic policies today than, than the UK does. I, I, I think there's more freedom, more economic freedom today. I think if you look at the economic freedom index, Ireland is ranked above the United Kingdom. So why not have Ireland take over the UK? I mean, there'd be certain historical justice there maybe. And, um, and uh, anyway, forget that. That ain't happening ever, ever. Remember nationalism? Ugh, the Brits would never, never, never agree to that. Um, but uh, it's time to get rid of this Protestant Catholic identity. It's time to throw, I mean, that's so non-European. One of the virtues of Europe uh, is, is their secularism. Get rid of all that uh, nonsense identity. Um, yeah, we've got other people here. My, my, my chat is exploding with people horrified by the idea that Ireland would rule over Britain. That's right, right, right. completely rational. Um, this is the nationalism, right? This is the problem in Europe and this is the problem in the world. What difference does it make? What matters is, are you free or are you not? What, matter, what does it matter who the ethnic group that happens to be uh, participating in the government happens to be? All that matters is, are you free or are you not? And don't you want to be more free than less free? Anyway, the deal that it is, is that Theresa May has brought is exactly the deal that I predicted when Brexit happened. Go back to my shows from a year ago when I talked about Brexit, when I predicted what would happen. I predicted that, that uh, the UK would get the worst of all worlds. They would get all the regulations, less freedom, no control over its own destiny, but it would pretend that it was separate from the EU. And that's what they're getting. Now, my hope is that Parliament turns down this Brexit deal. For, now, by law, the UK separates from Europe March 29th. I think it's March 29th. My hope is there is no deal. That the UK basically, what it's called, has a hard Brexit. And that as part of that hard Brexit, it does what I suggested it do, that it lowers regulations, lowers tariffs to zero, establishes itself as an island, as an island of free trade, as an island of capitalism. I mean, wow, that would be so cool. Now, it's not going to happen because the people in England and in, in, the, in the UK don't want it to happen. But imagine, imagine, right? If you lowered the tariffs, you lowered the you lowered tariffs, you lowered the regulations, and 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 you told the world we're open for trading, we're open for business. We we have zero tariffs with everybody. We have zero tariffs with China. We have zero tariffs with the United States. We are going to become what we were in the 19th century. We are going to become the trading nation that we were in the 19th century. We became as rich. As we did. We are going to become the leaders in the world in capitalism and in trade. We are going to adopt the model we gave Hong Kong when we took control of Hong Kong a hundred and something years ago. We're going to adopt that at home because you know what? It worked really, really good for the colony. It worked really, really good for Hong Kong. So we're going to adopt it here. Imagine. Imagine, oh, you know, uh, anyway, that's John Lennon's imagine, a little different than my imagine. But, um, yeah, somebody says most U.S. skeptics want that, you are. No, they don't. Give me a break. U.S. skeptics do not want zero tariffs with the rest of the world. 
You, most of you are skeptics, or a lot of you are skeptics, are much more like Donald Trump who wants tariffs with the rest of the world. You are skeptics want to keep out people. You are skeptics uh, do not believe in capitalism. I know very few of you are skeptics who actually believe in capitalism, actually believe in Hong Kong. They want their own status controls. They just don't want Brussels to control the status controls that they impose on their own people. They want to impose the status control on their own people. Now, if Daniel Hannan was running things, then, yeah, Daniel Hannan, I think, agrees with much of what, of what uh, I argue. Right? But Daniel Hannan is not running things. Daniel have, Hannan does not have control and power. Freedom, right? Freedom is what matters, not the ethnic group that you associate with, not the so-called cultural heritage of whatever you have. Culture changes. Some cultures are good, some cultures are bad. What you want is to keep all the good and get rid of the bad. Uh, and that doesn't come with genes. That comes with ideas. So uh, I would love to see Brexit done right and... It might get close to being done right just because of the hard Brexit won't give people much of a choice, but I still think they will do a lot less right uh, than they expect, uh, than, than I would want. I still think they're going to screw it up. Uh, you know, yeah, they, they, there are a lot, of, uh, a lot of the intellectual leaders of the, of the Brexit movement, uh, like, uh, like Marg and Hannon, uh, would love to see a free market, but they are the minority. They're the minority within their party. They're the minority among the British people. They are a minority even among those who voted for Brexit. Most people who voted for Brexit, most of the cab drivers, the taxi drivers in London that I talked to who voted for Brexit, did not vote for Brexit in order to make the United Kingdom a laissez-faire capitalist country. A few people in, uh, in maybe political leadership positions who don't really have much leadership because they don't have much control over their political party want that, but are they going to get it? They're not. I, I, wish, I wish they did. I wish they did. And I don't believe Farage uh, wants any of that. Uh, Farage is much more of a uh, nationalist uh, than he is a free market type. He has, he has very little... Uh, trust or belief in uh, in the free markets or would advocate or would propose uh, true free market reforms. It's much more about the nationalism and the, again, ethnic identity of those who are part of it. So um, I hope no deal Brexit is what happens. I think given the alternatives right now, that is the best alternative. I still think no deal Brexit, they will screw it up royally. And by the way, no deal Brexit, there is in one category, the uh, United Kingdom will lose and lose big time. And that is the category of free trade with Europe. Um, the free trade with Europe is a massive benefit to the UK. It's a massive benefit to Europe as well. Free trade with Europe, free movement of capital and free movement of labor is a massive benefit for both Europe and the United Kingdom. And to the extent that that goes away as part of a no deal Brexit, that is not good. But if the European Union will only have free trade on their conditions, which means regulations imposed on Britain, then of course the United Kingdom cannot accept that. Then what I proposed, which will not happen, but what I propose is unilaterally the United Kingdom uh, lower tariffs to zero with the rest of Europe and allow free movement of capital and so on. Uh, so there I am. Uh, I, I've heard Farage speak many times. Uh, I'm just responding, I guess, to some comments. I've heard Farage, who led UKIP, who, 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 was, uh, who was the main force behind, um, behind the movement uh, towards Brexit. I've heard him speak many times, and uh, he is no libertarian. He's no lover of free markets. Um, and I think that's why uh, Caswell, who was a member of UKIP, ultimately left UKIP, because while Caswell... Uh, was a free marketeer, he realized that UKIP was not a political party dedicated to free markets. All right, well, um, you know, it, it, I, I think that uh, I think that we're gonna, it's going to be an interesting few months as we approach Brexit. I think uh, I think the way it's going to be done will probably do some harm to the British economy. Uh, I think it's going to do harm to 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 
British culture, to British morale, to, to a lot of what happens in the Great Britain. I hope, I hope uh, what happens is, uh, is beneficial.